Welcome to the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast with your host, Tony Guerra. The Pharmacy Leaders Podcast is a member of the Pharmacy Podcast Network with interviews and advice on building your professional network, brand, and a purposeful second income from students, residents, and innovative professionals. Welcome to the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast. Uh, I asked Dr. Adam Martin to come back on to talk a little bit about his new book, and I was pretty excited about the book because I talked to him in a previous episode and one of the keys that he gave me was uh, the water test, which is drink water, see if you're hungry or if you're thirsty. And I've actually found that when I wake up, if I did the water thing instead of food, my abs actually feel much better. I feel skinnier. And then if I just went and ate the food and didn't do the water, I actually feel a little more bloated. So I'm, I'm, uh, a big fan of Dr. Adam Martin. He's got great tips. I took that one tip and uh, I've lost a couple of pounds with it, but I also feel a ton better uh, every morning. So uh, Dr. Adam Martin's here to talk a little bit about his new book. So welcome to the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast. Tony, cheers to you, man. That is awesome. I'm so glad to hear that you know you took that concept and, and put it into practice and it not only helped you with visible results, but feeling better. That's really the key with what I try to help people do. So Congratulations. That's fantastic. Well, let's get right to the book. Um, first, give us a little bit about the book, but your first uh, chapter is really the why behind the book. And I think that when somebody reads a book, they feel like they have to implement everything. And when I had that conversation with you, I was like, just hydrate. If I can just start with the hydrate, that'll be the first step. And uh, that was a successful step for me. So can you tell us a little bit about the why behind your book and then also uh, how to use the book in such a way that you don't feel overwhelmed, put it down and not do any action? Absolutely. And thank you so much for having me on your podcast. You have been crushing the game as far as providing value, not only to pharmacy students, which is a huge niche, but pharmacists and the profession overall. Uh, so I'm a big fan of yours and I really appreciate your time and expertise in sharing everything you have. So thank you, Tony. Awesome. Uh, with the book, um, you actually touched on part of the why. You said you took one thing that you could implement and put it into practice and stuck with that. That's really one of the reasons behind the book is we all want to be healthy. We all want to lead by example, but there's so much noise and information out there. It's overwhelming to the point where it comes to paralysis by analysis you know, what diet is best? What do I eat? What do I work out? Which one's the best? All these things can really just put us into a spiral of inaction because we're just assessing everything. So taking all of that noise, looking at what the science says, so actual peer-reviewed research, what is effective, and then taking that to pharmacy world, because if you tell a pharmacist, oh, eat a salad, you know, 30 minutes, chew 10 times before you swallow, we're, <laughs> we're going to laugh at you guys, you know? Like, it's not practical at all. Yeah. So if anyone in pharmacy has worked with someone that's given this advice, you probably roll your eyes and be like, this is never going to work because our niche of what we do as pharmacists is very high stress. It's very low time. We don't get lunch breaks. So how can we do that? And that's what I was told when I was an intern is you can be healthy as an intern, but when it comes pharmacists, you can throw that out the window. You're never going to be healthy. So I thought, hmm. So that was kind of the initial spark back in pharmacy school of, of this whole process um, but the why behind it is really, we are healthcare providers, we want to give best care to our patients, and we want to do that by leading through example. How do we do it with the time we don't have? That's the question. So yeah. that's, that's the whole impetus of the book and why I called it RxU, is it focuses on self-care. We manage lots of prescriptions, but one we often overlook to our own detriment, but we're trying to help others, is ourself. So how do we take care of ourselves? How do we script our own success so that we can dispense our full potential? That's the why behind the book. Well, let's talk about chapter two and the need for health and health care. So I walk into the CrossFit gym and these are some very healthy people uh, and they've been there for years and sometimes that's a little bit intimidating. I'll walk into the free weight section of my of my gym uh, where there's childcare uh, and I'll go over there and maybe I'll do some deadlifts. And those are some people that are pretty fit too, but I walk into a pharmacy or I walk into a doctor's office. I walk even into the hospital and I find that those people in scrubs or in lab coats are not necessarily looking very healthy. 
not not just maybe physique wise, but you just see the exhaustion, the purple eyes, all of these things. There, I guess. How do you as a, as a part of a profession where they primarily worry about giving to other people before they worry about their own health. How do you return health to healthcare? That's an excellent question, Tony. And you really hit the nail on the head. How do you give it to others? That's the question. And really the focus, regardless of what niche you are in or looking to go into, that's what brings us all together as a profession. How do we dispense the best care? And here's the main concept to answer that question. You cannot pour from an empty cup. We want to fill everyone's glass. We want to make them healthier, lead them to better health. But we can't do that if we have nothing to give. Now, when you first start out as a pharmacy student or a pharmacist, that can that works. You can, you know, sacrifice your workouts and health. No problem. That is effective. You will meet your mission. However, if you play that out month after month, year after year, things are going to start to creep up. Maybe obesity, type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, lots of things can creep up and manifest to a point where it's like, oh crap, what happened? And then you're not going to be able to perform at your full potential in that capacity. So when we really focus on ourselves, it's not being selfish at all. It's actually quite the opposite. It's when we take care of ourselves, we can then bring our best selves to our patients. And that's what people, whenever I work with them, I've worked with Uh, I've had the honor of working with students and interns and and other pharmacists. And the first thing they say is, dude, what do you take? Like, where do you go? (laughs) And I'm like, what do you mean? Like, this is just me. Like a magic pill. I go up the beach, I get the magic pill, and then I I look like this. It's great. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But, I mean, I've been – It's this isn't some, like, fad that I've been on for, you know, a few months. I've been living this way for over a decade. And that's where I get all my energy from is making that focus of mastering your mindset. And it's not just a diet of what am I eating, but what am I feeding my mind? Am I watching the news and being depressed or am I going to seminars? Am I reading books? Am I networking with people who can really bring me up and have a lot of value to share? Like listening to Tony's podcast, for example. <laughs> Thanks. I appreciate that. Well, plug. That, you, you gave me a great plug. Well, let's talk about, now, let me, I don't know if I've got the name right. It's Dr. Corey Probst. Is that the, the name of the wellness director and VP of Diet Doc? Yes. Uh, that's, it. that's the one that I think you talk about mindset. Um, can you talk a little bit about that mindset chapter and, and how you integrate that kind of mentorship or, or the partnership that you have uh, there? And talk about how you, I think you put, say something like mind, if the mind believes, then you achieve or something like that. Yeah. The body achieves what the mind believes. Okay. So absolutely. Everything that we do, all of our intentions, our actions, all of the things that we do come from what we think, what we believe. So if this isn't like a hooey thing, and when I first heard this whole like mindset concept years ago, I was like, what the heck? But I wasn't coming at it, ironically, with an open mind. (laughs) So that's really what you got to look at. And that's been really my obsession and passion in the past few years is learning how to master your mindset, how to come every day at your absolute best mentally. Because I have tried both ways, guys. I have tried like doing my own thing and, you know, we get overwhelmed and worried as a pharmacist. You know, we have to do 30 things at one time. And we have to, you know, we've got quotas if you work in the retail setting. So there's tons of stress and pressure. If you're not managing that outside of the moment, being at home, outside of work, feeding your brain with positive things, you're not going to be able to handle unexpected stressors. A tech calls off, your quota goes down, you know, you, you automatically have to get 80 flu shots in 30 minutes, you know, that whole thing. <laughs> So when, when you know, that's why I'm, this is the real world, so uh, this, this is real life. <laughs> so this is stuff we deal with. So if you try to manage it when it happens, it's not going to be very effective. However, if you make this a consistent practice and really look at how can you better your mind, you're going to be able to perform so much better as a pharmacist. And that's what we all want to do. We all want to give the best care to those we care about, our patients, our friends, our family, our colleagues, our coworkers, our boss. All those things really start with the mindset, and that's why I made it the first chapter. And the reason that you asked about Dr. Corey Probst, who's a phenomenal colleague of mine, uh, we've worked together since 2013. Uh, she has a PhD, and her focus is on health psychology. Um, I could go on and on about all the extensive work and doctorates and things that she's done, 
but her impact with those she works with is from focusing on the mindset first because people come to me to other coaches and they say, Hey man, I want to get ripped and jacked and look amazing and all the stuff. That's what they say. But a lot of times how we get there really starts with reframing our mind, our beliefs and the things we're feeding our mind on a daily basis. Um, so that's something I've become you know, super passionate about. Uh, I've been to a Tony Robbins seminar. I just got back from uh, Lewis Howes and Jay Shetty seminar, uh, summit of greatness. I went to Grant Cardone's 10 X seminar all this year because I've become really just ingrained in how can I learn the best from the best in the world. And then what I do is I take those concepts and think, how can this help pharmacy world, students, pharmacists? And then that's where all of my content comes from is I take them, I implement them. And if it's useful, I share it. So I'm like, if this helps me, I'm sure it can help other people. And that's really become my mission in helping those in our profession to really dispense their full potential. Well, tell me a little bit about the nutrition, I think, which was the next chapter. Uh, and just specifically, I want to see if you can talk about bulk cooking, because I feel like as pharmacists, uh, we end up getting like bulk Lunchables as our, <laughs> as, as our food of choice. <laughs> yeah, you know, food of choice. You know, is there a way that, um, you know, you talk about bulk cooking, maybe on the weekend, it becomes a family thing. But so rarely do I see anyone bring their food. And then if they do, it's still kind of a little bit depressing that you go into that little back room. <laughs> no light. It's like being in a basement. You know, is there, is there a way to bring joy back into lunch and, and, and not make it about like counting calories and things like that? But can you talk a little bit about bulk cooking and how that might be one of the solutions to getting the nutrition we need? Game changer, man. Awesome question. So you talked about how to bring the joy back to nutrition. Um, Lunchables really did try to nail it that, you know, they added Reese's cup, they added some fruit, you know, little snack in there it, for me back in the day. I love the pizza Lunchables. <laughs> I love Those that. are, yeah, they're, they're still pretty good. My, my kids eat them, but I just look at them and I'm just like, man, something should, yeah, it just, it just does not look healthy. <laughs> right. So in a pinch, you know, there are options like even in a pharmacy and, and that's one thing I'm always jealous of is whenever I, I'm, I'm obsessed with pharmacy, if you could tell. So whenever I travel, I make it a point if there's a pharmacy school or a pharmacy, I literally go in and just check it out. And I'm always so like disappointed because I'm like, wow, these places have so many much, so much more healthier options than where I work. Um, my Where I work at, there are other locations that have much healthier options. But for whatever reason, I just get the shaft in that department. So like for me, I mean, jerky is my staple. So you can't okay. find things that work. They're not going to be optimal, but you can find them in a pinch. However... If you're looking to really maximize that, that's where that whole phrase of proper preparation prevents poor performance really yields value to bulk cooking. And basically the, the premise of what that is, is cooking a lot of food at one time so you don't have to cook each meal as it comes. So instead of taking the impractical approach for a pharmacist of cook breakfast, cook lunch, cook dinner, cook snacks each day, that's a lot of time, right? but we don't have much. So if you bulk cook, making you know four cups of rice at once, dividing that up, um, baking a bunch of chicken breasts, or you know whatever food you enjoy to eat, baking that or making that at one time, and then portioning it out, that way you can just literally grab it out of the fridge and go. Um, and, and how you do that really depends on your preferences, which is nice. Uh, this brings in that concept I mentioned throughout the book of structured flexibility. So structure, having a plan of what to do, and then flexibility, kind of rolling with the punches for what life throws at you. So if every Sunday is your day and you can't get to it, you don't feel like a failure. You can you know, adapt and swerve and, and get back on track based on what you can do. So that's the, the main concept with that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it can be fun too. Uh, you as a father and a husband, you can make that a family affair. You can get the kids involved. Uh, you can get the wife involved. Um, I love to dance. Uh, you know, <laughs> okay. Pandora is a great thing, especially when you're cooking. So you can get you, there's a there's a bonus. While you cook, you can dance and burn off the calories you're about to eat. <laughs> nice. So you can get creative with it, and you can do it. You know, as a, a couple times a week, you can do it one day a week. Whatever your preference and time allows. That's the beauty of it. Is you can customize it to what is realistic for your lifestyle. Okay. Well. The, the next chapter I wanted to, maybe maybe you can explain it better than I could, but can you explain a macro? Uh, it's, it's certainly a buzzword within nutrition and fitness, but I don't know if 
people necessarily knew, know how to use that word to benefit their fitness. And you talk a little bit about Pareto's principle, the 80-20 rule, but can you explain the macro to us? Oh, shizzle, man. Okay. <laughs> so the question people always look at when they're trying to get more healthy is how, how many calories does that have? Or if they're eating out, they say, how many calories is in that? Or, oh my God, did you hear there are this many calories? Where does calories come from? And that derives from macros, which is short for macronutrients. Um, of those, there are three, carbohydrates or carbs, protein, and fat. That's where calories come from. So when you look at each individual, it comes from one gram yielding a certain amount of calories, which is a, a side note. When you say calorie, you really mean kilocalorie. But instead of saying, oh, that has 500 kilocalories, in, in, in order to sound less nerd-like and more mainstream, just shorten it to calories. So just an aside as a, a technical thing. But looking back at macros, we'll look first at carbs. So carbohydrates, that's like your bread, your pasta. One gram will yield you four kilocalories. Just like protein, one gram will yield you four kilocalories. But fat yields you nine kilocalories per gram. That's not to say one is better than the other or you should avoid one. There's a balance with that. Each of them are essential. It's kind of like a tripod. You kick one leg out and you're down. Um, and that's what a lot of the, the, the fad diets and nutrition programs manipulate is you know, high carb diets, low carb diets, high fat, low fat. Those are what they're looking at are the macronutrients because that's where calories or kilocalories comes from. Um, we can go real deep into that and have a whole podcast on each macro. Uh, but for brevity's sake, that's kind of an intro into what they are and, you know, the whole premise behind calories and the relationship with macronutrients. And so alcohol is seven kilocalories per gram. Uh, that doesn't fit into the, the macro uh, section, uh, but that's how much energy you get out of it. So yes. can you explain how alcohol kind of fits in and, you know, what is moderation? Uh, what, you know, as a competitive athlete, I'm going to guess you're probably on the low end of never using it. But in terms of people uh, using alcohol, is there anything to the whole low carb beer or the low calorie beer? Uh, how I hate to say they make it sound healthy, but you know, when they're like, well, it's only 60 calories per, so you can have such and such many. Um, can you uh, explain what moderation is or, or how that fits in uh, with the kilocalories uh, and the alcohol, or maybe it's the calories that so I'm, I'm just not sure how alcohol fits in. Dude, such a good question. Uh, so much so that I actually did a podcast on this whole topic because it can be pretty confusing. You brought up some of the really good topic questions, not only just alcohol with drinking, but sugar alcohols. Uh, if you ever had like a protein bar and you look oh, at okay. yeah. the nutrition facts, like sugar alcohol, like what the hell is that? So looking at alcohol, you asked about macros. It, it is known as the fourth macro. Um, there's no real nutritional value. So that's why I excluded it. But yes, alcohol is a huge implication. I'm a firm believer in no restriction and moderation, um, but I actually am a big fan of bourbon. Uh, so, and it's funny because I've connected with a lot of pharmacists uh, through that one thing. I got into it. My sister actually went to University of Kentucky a few years back as a student, and my dad and I went to visit her, and we went on what's known as the bourbon trail, uh, which is where a lot of the big distilleries, um, like uh, what, what is it, uh, Wild Turkey, Russell, okay. All those things are there. But looking at alcohol, yes, moderation is key. And it does have a huge play because alcohol is an extraneous substance. So when you ingest it, your body looks at that and shifts away from digesting other macros, carbs, protein, and fat, and looks at alcohol. So we have to get rid of this first. So that kind of breaks that process down. Um, that's a real brief explanation. There's a lot more to that. Um, but just know that, yes, it does impact nutrition and how your body breaks things down. A really okay. good point that you brought up about calories, let's say you said low-cal beer. So if you say like, you know, this beer only has 100 calories, well, we just talked about macros or make up calories. You look at the nutrition label and it only has four grams of carbs. Well, we talked about one gram of carb is four calories. Four times four is 16. How is the beer, you know, 100 or 120 calories, where does that come from? So that's where alcohol really has a play is it does have um, calories, but no real nutritional value. 
Um, I, like I said, I can really dive deep. So I'm trying to hold back on that topic. Uh, phenomenal question. I did do a podcast on it, but yes, it can have an impact. Moderation is key and just, you know, being enjoying in the moment. Okay. Well, let's talk about resources. Uh, we have no lack of information. We have lack of good information. Oh, man. Can you talk about how uh, it, it may just be easier to tell me what your website is and move on to the next question, but uh, tell me a little bit about resources and, and how in the world can we know if something's good advice or not good advice? Because even if it's good for them, it still might not be good for us. So have you ever gotten an email from like an uncle, you know, that one uncle that just forwards all the emails <laughs> <laughs> and it's like forward this yeah, and 10, yeah. 10 people or you'll be blessed, you know, cursed with yeah, yeah, yeah. things like that. That's where a lot of the misinformation comes from is it just spreads like a virus and it's from people either, you know, good or bad intentions, really looking to make a name for themselves and be famous. So that's where a lot of it stems from or people that are just, they're not aware. They think they really believe what they know is genuine, but it's not what the science says. It's not helpful. And it can actually sometimes be dangerous. So looking at the resources, that's a topic I look at in my book, how to identify a good quality resource when it comes to nutrition or fitness and how to identify a resource that's not worth your time. So uh, there's a whole section in the book, uh, rather than going through it all, I gave you, there's actually a chart uh, from a textbook showing you all the resources that are legitimate that are peer reviewed scientific that are you know good for you that because they're backed by research and how to identify things that are just looking for clicks and eyeballs to share and send those spammy emails. Um, so that's why in the book, there's a really good section looking at that. Also on my website, all the articles I post, a lot of them have resources because I don't like giving out information until I know it to be backed by research, evidence-based medicine, evidence-based nutrition, fitness, all of those things. Safety is number one important uh, when it comes to sharing information and then how to apply it is a whole other game. But that's really why I wanted a section in the book to help you identify what's real and what's fake. Because like you said, there's so much misinformation out there. It's which ones are legit and which ones can we actually use for ourselves. Okay. Well, let's talk a little bit about barriers to becoming physically fit. We haven't talked about exercise at all. So maybe talking about chapter seven and eight, uh, I get up. I used to do the 445 class, but now I do the 530 class. And I work out 532, almost seven-ish in the morning each day. So I'm somebody who may be the exception to the traditional rule, but because I have a job that as an instructor at a, at a college that you know, I can pull that off and then survive the rest of the day. But when you're working 12s and things like that, how do you get these barriers, mental barriers, first of all, out of the way? And then second, actually fit the physical fitness into your routine. We all face these barriers. We all have the same struggles. I am not some like super person like guys. I'm just like you. I'm a pharmacist. I'm a regular dude. I just have a passion for fitness. And because that's been a priority, I've been able to get creative along the way and find things to overcome these obstacles that, you know, can and sometimes do get in our way of staying healthy. Um, that's kind of why I'm doing all these things and writing the book is to help address these issues. So in the fitness chapter in the book, I talk about the seven deadly sins of fitness, of stopping us get in the way. And there are myths, misconceptions and barriers that we face as pharmacists. So one being like, I'm so busy, I don't have time to work out. That's probably the most common thing when it comes not just to fitness, but anything that, you're look, that you've been looking to achieve over a long time but haven't been able to nail down, that's, that's really common. Um, we talk about stretching. We talk about which workout is best. Should I do CrossFit? Should I do cardio and weights or just weight? When should I do it? Should I do cardio first thing in the morning on an empty stomach? Why is that not optimal? So we look at all of these common things that are questions or things getting in our way, look at that, break it down from the science. I actually interviewed my trainer that I've had for five years. He's one of the best peak performance coaches in the world. This guy's phenomenal. I've been using him for years. That's why I know what he's talking about. And we break down really simple tips that you can use as a pharmacist or pharmacy student, regardless of what your fitness goals are. It's just how to tackle these things that are getting in our way of following through on what our goal is. Okay. And then the, the last uh, part of your book, uh, talking about really 
just, I guess, committing to action. But I think that some people have to have an accountability partner. So can you talk first about the action steps someone might start with? And then where do they say, I failed, I didn't do it myself, I need to get a coach, I need to get an accountability partner? We all need coaches. We went to pharmacy school. We didn't just like, you know, study on our own. We had. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. So look, look, at, look back at the basics. I have a coach. We all have coaches in life in whatever area that's important to us. Um, if you're religious, you have a spiritual coach, your pastor. Um, if you're married, you, you probably did some sort of marriage prep class. If you have a job, you probably have some sort of partner. In pharmacy school, we had teachers. We had professors. We had organizations or mentors for people either in pharmacy school above us or pharmacists leading us through that path. Um, proofreading your CV or your resume when you apply to a job. Th those are all mentors and coaches that you have had in your life because it's been a goal that's been important to you and you want the follow through from someone who has done it and can keep you accountable, just as you said. So the last part of the book is basically we talked about all this great stuff, but what am I going to do with it? So it breaks down every single goal you have, whether that's fitness, nutrition, pharmacy, whatever, and it breaks it down into a simple process that you can create an action plan for whatever that is and guarantee that you're able to follow through and see that to the end so that you can reach the results that you desire and deserve. Awesome. All right. Well, uh, instead of going into the resources and references in the book, can you uh, give us your website and then how to best get in touch with you? Absolutely. So my website is thefitpharmacist.com. My, the best place to reach me, um, I'm on social media, but by far the best place is on Insta. Insta. Yeah. <laughs> I'm all about the Instagram, man. Yeah. The gram okay. glam. So I'm at the fit pharmacist, uh, very active on there. Feel free to, you know, comment on my, my posts or send me a DM. Uh, I'm always happy to engage with you guys and, and help you out on your own journey because I've been there. I've been through that process and I'm still through it now. I, I've not quote made it. We're always on an ongoing journey of constant and never-ending improvement. And that's what's beautiful about it is we grow along that way. So focusing on just improving 1% each and every day will allow you to get to that 100%, 110% you're looking to achieve in the long run. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for being on the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast. Thank you, Tony. It's been a pleasure. Support for this episode comes from the audiobook Memorizing Pharmacology, a relaxed approach with over 9,000 sales in the United States, United Kingdom, and Australia, it's the go-to resource to ease the pharmacology challenge. Available on Audible, iTunes, and Amazon.com. In print, ebook, and audiobook. Thank you for listening to the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast with your host, Tony Guerra. Be sure to share the show with the hashtag #PharmacyLeaders. Leaders. 